As a means of making art, bronze casting has been around for over 7,500 years. The character of the metal allows the artist to work in a medium which is both organic and durable. Prized for its strength, bronze as a medium for sculpture is long-lasting, allowing admirers to enjoy these works for centuries. Part of the uh, reason why I started out in bronze was I found that it had enormous flexibility, everything from doing a portrait to uh, uh, possibly uh, a, a figure to uh, geometric forms if I wanted to do it. Um, I, I love it because it's, it has enormous durability. It will be around in 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 years. Robert Wick has been working in bronze for over 50 years. Beginning with portraits, Wick sculptures have evolved into works of large organic structures, which are not only figurative, but also architectural. His works have evolved through the years with living plants that allow his ideas to take on a truly distinctive nature in today's lexicon of art. The real inspiration definitely comes uh, from both a human figure and nature. And the human, of course, they're, they're one and the same. Human figure is nature. It's just the more recent manifestation of nature, that's all. You can leave this flute, though. I'd leave Robert video. Wick has worked on some pieces a number of years. For instance, one sculpture, entitled St. Earth, took nine years to complete. First, ideas come through drawings, and then Wick makes a small plaster model to define the shapes. Finally comes the larger work. From the drawings, uh, I'll expand even just little uh, fingernail sketches into a fairly good-sized drawing. The drawing is a projection of the mind. The model is also a projection of the mind, but it starts to drop into three-dimensionality. Next, Wick recreates the model in large scale, deciding on fine details that give each piece its unique character. The model is a model, and it is a, a plan. But like all things that go to final resolution, those plans can be altered here and there because of the way we look at it, because how we walk up next to it and into it and become a participant with it. And so it does change, and details of it will change, often in character. These pieces are enormous, sometimes reaching 15 feet in scale. If you make something that's 8 feet or 10 or 12 feet tall, it has a power that not only uh, by its sheer scale, but its place in, in, in nature, where I want to place my works, has its, has its proper relationship. Alone in his combining living plants and bronze, Wick's sculptures bring a unique and new vision of the ancient Japanese art of bonsai. Bonsai is a miniaturizing of the plant. Wick's vision of bonsai expands the union of plants and sculpture. When I showed at different museums and different uh, botanic gardens, there were times when I allowed the people at the botanic garden to actually um, put the plants in themselves, in which I wouldn't dictate any plants. And I was startled by the implications of what they perceived and what they put into it. And it, it was like a new insight, a new idea. Bronze sculpture is a time-honored skill that can take decades to master. Yet the astounding scale, detail, and durability of this material make it an art form accessible for many to appreciate. For Robert Wick, nature is a boundless source of inspiration. In his secluded home located in the Mule Mountains of Bisbee, Arizona, Wick is in his element, surrounded by wild flora and fauna in every direction. Mexico to the south, Huachuca Mountains to the west. Living out here, to me, I, I guess I see, when you're in nature like this, the primal forces of nature. Whatever limitations I may have, being in the force of nature's presence all the time permeates the very soul of what one, one is in a lot of ways. Wick's bronze sculptures are the manifestation of his philosophy. Man is forever connected to nature. Man is conscious nature. His sculptures fuse the man-made material of bronze with live plants, a modern-day twist on the ancient Japanese art of bonsai. These pieces are designed in harmony with nature, so they enhance, not detract from, the beauty of the outside world. 
You know, if you put a fern in something, it's soft and gentle. If you put a mescal in something, or a prickly pear, or a cactus, it's now acute, it's sharp. The implication of what that plant is adds another layer of meaning to what the sculpture is about. And it's saying we're interwoven, we're one and the same. No separation. And this is the way the world should see us. We're not separated. Wick hopes his bronzes will remind us of our responsibility to protect and honor our natural world, of which we are only a recent evolutionary fragment. It's not my name. My name is irrelevant. No one will ever know who Wick was or that. That's not it. It's that if I create something of beauty, someone else, hopefully, We'll see it in another time and place and project what my world was about, at least in part through the forms and shapes that I've given them. As I've grown older, I only see the more magnificence of existence and the magic and the wonder of it. And um, it leaves me in awe. Or it leaves me. And I, uh, I feel blessed. I feel blessed that I've had the opportunity to have this life that I've had. Robert J. Wick, Living Bronze Sculpture. Get inspired at robertwick.com.